Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Let's Morning, it. everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got some special guests in the building. I don't know how we made this happen. We have Wendy Williams and Kevin Hunter on the line. <laughs> <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> now, we have the two actors that played uh, Wendy Williams, Sierra Payton, and Morocco, who played Kevin Hunter. Welcome, guys. I don't see Morocco. Morocco's on there? Yeah, he's on yeah, there. Yeah, he's on here. Hey, Rock. Good morning. What's up, oh, Morocco, what's up, you, what's up King? Okay, there you go. Yeah. You doing, man? Now, how did you prepare for this? We've been hearing this story for a long time. We work with somebody that you might have heard work with Charlemagne. I mean, work with Wendy Williams, uh, Charlemagne. So, how did you guys prepare for this role? Let's start with you, Sierra. Oh, um, you know, it was crazy because look, here's here's the deal. A couple years ago, I think it was summer 2019. People start tweeting me and being like, hey, you should totally play Wendy Williams if they ever do a movie on her life. And I was like, that's so random. But yeah, that'd be dope. I'd love to to take that on. And so I did The Oval. The Oval came out uh, October 2019. And then more and more people were behind the little keyboard saying, you should play Wendy. And I was like, shoot, let me just go ahead and answer this call. So I just started watching her again. And you know, getting myself familiar with her. And I was like, I know this audition is going to be coming up one of these days, so I might as well just prepare. Then Leah Daniels Butler, shout out to her. Leah. She's the casting director on this uh, project. And I've been auditioning for her for 10 years, and we've <laughs> never had a booking together. Wow. I mean, I got close on Empire, got close on a couple other things, but nothing. And so when this came on her desk, she called me in. I did the audition, knocked it out, had a call back producer session and then I booked the role and yeah. so um but then I had to step out of the role because it was uh interfering or conflicting with uh, Tyler Perry's The Oval season two so I was heartbroken um but then the world fell apart COVID happened and uh and then they all you know shut down and then restarted back up in August and I was able to do it and so my preparation just kind of started back up from there watching her again but um, the the main thing is that I wanted to approach her as a real human being. I didn't want to just give everybody what you guys see on the TV show, what you heard on the radio back in the day. I just wanted to show a woman that has gone through some things and she just so happens to be, you know, a public figure. And um, so I just that that's where I started from, just making her, you know, more authentic and human and then adding on all the other little pieces from there. And then I got to talk to her and that kind of solidify the the research and the preparation so now, now what about you Morocco I know you didn't get a chance to speak to Kev or did you no I didn't I mean thank God thank God you didn't get that kind of toxicity in your life and in your energy space sir I don't I don't think Charlemagne likes Kev too much but go ahead brother yeah you know what I got a call on on a Monday I was on a flight by Thursday I had two weeks to quarantine I couldn't find anything. Yo, online. he sounds like Kev too. Yo, yeah. he sounds like. He Kev. did a he did a good job. You guys both did, but go Thank ahead. You. So I had two weeks to prepare. All I could find was like a phone call, some pictures, and then I listened to interviews from what other people were saying about him, and then I kind of meshed Fat Joe and Dame Dash together. <laughs> just put it, you know, you know, what I'm saying like. Just give them that New York, because I'm from Chicago, so I had to give them that New York kind of energy. So, you know, that's that's what I did, man. I just laid it there. Just put it there. Right. I was telling Envy that Kevin actually didn't seem so bad, like, from watching the movie, because I know we've heard about how toxic their relationship was, and Wendy's spoken about him being a cheater from the very beginning. But when you get to see how nice he was to her early on, that was interesting to me. What instructions did Wendy give you as far as playing her ex-husband? None. I didn't get to speak to, to Wendy really? at all. No. I mean, as an actor, I just built it, like like Sierra said, I tried to bring some humanity to him because, you know, these He's not human. Love... Stop it, Charlemagne. <laughs> <laughs> He's not human, Morocco. Oh, I didn't speak to you, Charlemagne. I didn't get to speak to you, though. You should have called me. <laughs> I don't have your number. Damn. I don't have your number. <laughs> so I, I just developed that love part of how he felt about her and then, you know, there's that flip. And because it's lifetime, you can't get too gritty. 
I couldn't go full Ike Turner in there. You know, I had some stuff. They, they, I mean, they, you had a scene though, but yeah, you know, stuff out. <laughs> but, stuff. but it got it got taken out. I was gonna yeah, ask yeah. that because we all we all heard stories of domestic violence, and Charlemagne has mentioned it once or twice. That would have been more accurate, or three times or four times. But we didn't see that side. Why was that taken out? Do you know why I was taken out? It. I mean, it's a it's a made for TV movie. They got a really tight time slot that they have to you know abide by and again i just think it's a part of the the network and the genre so you know um that that would be a network question but i think it's a, a time frame thing and subject matter thing as well she so, that's she, my opinion she probably didn't want to want to want to want to portray that you know and that's 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 the kind of weird part about documentaries and movies right because i feel like if you're gonna if you're gonna put it out there you got to put out 100 not 50 right i would think <laughs> Yeah. It's also yeah. hard because that's a long period of time to fit into a movie because that was, you know, what, how many years of her life from when she first started out before she was even on the radio up until mm. pretty much that's a long time. So you, there's a lot of things I'm sure that got left out. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's like 20 yeah. years, right, that you're trying to put into like a hour and a half, two hour movie. Mm-hmm. It rolled fast. Mm-hmm. It rolled really fast. It, it, it jumped a lot, especially me being from New York. So you hear the stories and you see. So it, it definitely rolled fast. Now, how how often did you get a chance to speak to Wendy, Sierra? Did y'all speak a lot or was it just one time? And, you know, how involved was she with the project? Well, we spoke twice on the phone, like four weeks before I started filming. And both conversations were hours long. And I mean, for me, I just wanted to sit back and listen to her retell these stories and kind of hear them from her point of view. And then after that, I was like, you know what? I think I got what I need. I think I'm ready to go rock it out. And she was just like, yeah, like, call me if you need anything. Send me a text. Like, I'm here. And that was it. So we spoke twice. And then I just went off and. So y'all never meet? Y'all never met face to face? We've never met face to face. We've only and we've only met like this in in interviews so far. So. um, So, yeah, but she's been great. I mean, she saw the uh, trailer and the movie and she sent me two very lovely text messages and so it's been great you know this is the second wendy one wendy williams movie that they've done i know and i couldn't find the first one i was digging all around <laughs> you know the internet for it and i was sh- like they they hid that one from me <laughs> yeah robin Givens uh played wendy williams <laughs> yeah movie, were you a part of that one charlamagne i was in it actually I, oh, I, I, you in this you one. Play? oh wait I, hold on charlamagne i gotta ask you yes have you seen the movie no, I haven't seen it yet. Ah, oh, okay, never mind. What were you going to ask him? I, I, I'll answer for him. What were you going to yeah, ask we'll him? answer for him. Have you, oh, okay. Well, I don't know. Should he be surprised? He knows the story. I mean, so what? No, no. So I really, we I, did I, it. He I, did I, it. I, I know the story. Yeah, he, I don't know what Lifetime show. I already told him everything. So what, what was your, what was your okay. question? No, I was just wondering what he thought about, you know, his uh, his portrayal. <laughs> in, I haven't seen uh, it. <laughs> what am I doing in the movie? I never seen Charlemagne with a headband on before, right? A headband, yeah, because dude got a headband, right? <laughs> right, and he's so happy. I can't remember. Yeah, in the in the movie, that interview, he's so happy. Charlemagne's like this, like you, very happy in there. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember that. But what I, what, what were your thoughts I took a on picture Wendy? Of us, what, so. Sierra, what were your thoughts on Wendy before taking the role in the film? Like her life when you just saw it from the outside looking in. I mean, I just, I, she, to me, reminded me of my Aunt Kathy, you know, and I just felt like she's very crass, very outspoken and very, very funny and entertaining. And so um, when I used to watch her on the show, because I, look, I'm from New Orleans, I went to school in North Carolina. And so by the time I got to New York in 2008, that was my first introduction to Wendy Williams. And I just remember hearing her on the radio a little bit. And then she got on the TV show and I was like, whoa, like, who is this person? <laughs> you know, I was mm-hmm. like, wow, she's going there. Um, so I just thought that she was just some like fabulous, uh, you know, woman who just, again, reminded me of my Aunt Kathy. And then when I got the role, yeah, I mean, I was excited, but also very nervous as well, because I know you know, we all know of like the controversy and the people who love her and the people who don't. And I just knew like stepping into those shoes, you know, it was going to open up all of that for me on some level. But um, at the end of the day, I was like, you know what, like, I want to honor this woman's story, honor her life. And, you know, look, she's God's child, too. And so I was like, let me get up in there and rock it and, and do the thing. So now, Morocco, for you playing the character of, of Kevin Hunter, 
yeah. in the movie, we see that he cheats on her while she's pregnant, right? In your head, because you're playing this role, how do you justify a man doing something like that? Because you have to say, okay, I'm in character, but what is going through a man's mind when he's doing something like oh, that? Oh, shit, Morocco. This is a trick bag question. Ah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, that's a good question because I, I had to make a list of reasons of why he fell in love with this woman. And then I had to make a re list of reasons of why he started stepping out. So my, you know, that's a good question, Angela. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm and I try not to judge my characters. I just say, all right, let me just play this role and and live in the moment. So I don't want to tell you my secrets of why I chose as the character to step out, but it's never gonna it's never gonna justify a man cheating on a pregnant woman. You know what I mean? It's never it, whatever I say is never gonna say, oh well, that's that that's understandable. You know, unless it's someone else's child. You know what I mean? Um, so. Yeah, I, I I don't really have a I can't <laughs> I cannot defend it. I'm not a defense lawyer. I cannot defend that. I can't defend anybody. Because I'm sure in your head you have to be like, what is Kevin thinking that makes him feel like this is okay to do? You know what I mean? Of course, of course. You try to break down all the psychological and human behaviors, and you know, no matter where you get to, you're gonna hit a wall and say, okay, well, hmm. Let me just make this happen and, and and try to justify it as much as I can. But to a pregnant wife or woman, that's it's still, you know, you can't say, well, this is why I did it. It's not going to be acceptable. You know? Now, Sierra. Just, Sierra looking at you like she's Wendy Williams mad right, right now. Right, 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 right. You, <laughs> no. you get the sheet of music and you just say, okay, this is the song I'm going to play. All right, cool. I don't get these notes. That's now, it. Now, now, Sierra, what would you, how would you feel about the person that introduced the mistress to your husband. <laughs> was that Charlemagne that did that? That was me, but I ain't tell him to fuck him. <laughs> I just introduced him. I, you know, I mean, that's like yo, this is my homegirl. It's, yo, I ain't. A, at the time Man. he had a, at the time he had a modeling agency, and mm -hmm. she, or, or I guess you could say modeling agency, but she, and she wanted to be a model. That's why the introduction happened. But. Mm -hmm. I have so many questions. Let's talk, but, Sierra. And it's so funny because I was like, hmm, should I, should I just drop in the DMs with Charlamagne and be like, yo, tell me. But then I was like, nah, let me let me create this world for myself. But um, but no, I just wonder sometimes, you know, just all of it. How did all of that go down? Like, did you know Charlamagne? And, you know, were you like, yo, Wendy? Or you were just like, I'm just. Let me just stay out of it. Oh, I know? knew, but it wasn't none of my business. You know what I'm saying? And Wendy knew mm -hmm. from the beginning too. So it would be it would be like I remember one time she left her license in in uh I guess Wendy's car that Kev what? used to drive. Yeah. Stupid. And so she had to she had her driver's license. So from that point on, and this had to be this was two thousand seven. Wow. Wendy Wendy knew since then. I remember when we were sitting in the studio and Wendy asking me, like, you know Sharina Hudson? Such and such address, North Carolina. I know you know her because that's the Carolinas. I'm just like I don't, I don't know that person. And now in a movie, you said exactly who she was, and you actually was that him driving Wendy to um, the house. No, okay, that was, was another else. guy. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I, I'm sorry. I, I thought Charlemagne sure. was. I thought Charlemagne was the one that drove Wendy to the house when when she did all that stuff. Okay. Yeah, that never happened like that. Wendy knew. Wendy knew about her when he she found her license in one of Wendy's cars or Kev's car. It was one of their cars. And the young lady had now, left her driver's license in there. Charlemagne, are you are you team Wendy or team Sharina? I don't give a damn about either one of them. <laughs> <laughs> to, be, to, be to, to be totally honest with you, I don't care about either one of them. Let's not All go right. on that. I don't mean that. Girl. I don't mean that fair, in a negative way enough. either. That, I mean that, that was negative. I mean that in the most. I can't <laughs> wait to talk to my therapist on Friday. I have empathy for people. Way I just don't care about. Either one of them. God now, bless them. I Charlo wish them the best. Charlamagne doesn't think he's in the doc. And I told him that he's in the documentary after the show. Yeah, I heard that. I, I haven't seen the documentary, but I heard that you are in it, Charlamagne. Mm -hmm. Well, my lawyers my lawyers have just talked to Lifetime this week. and it, it will, Oh, Lord. It'll it's be, all good. It's all positive. It'll, we, it'll, we don't need no lawsuits. It'll be different this, it'll be different this weekend. Because <laughs> I never signed a release. But well, Morocco, you, you talked about humanizing him mm -hmm. right and I, and listen i'm only speaking from a personal perspective because he's, <laughs> he's a terrible human 
Like yeah. in every way possible. And like Not I don't try, I, I, saw. I, I don't judge people either because I, 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 I understand that folks have unhealed trauma that they haven't dealt with. But he's a really, really, really terrible person. So at what like judgment. Where did you <laughs> what did you look at that made you be able to humanize him and even find some good in him? I mean, the way the script was was constructed, you know, how they fell in love, the whole interaction. And it wasn't like I could just come in and play the one note of being a bad guy. You know what I mean? So it was just like if I build him up on this end, then, you know, by the end of the movie, it, that flip will that flip will come. So and like I said, I didn't have any guy. I had no interaction with anybody who really knew him that I could just say, yo, well, tell me about this, brother. You know, the few people that kind of knew him, they gave me a few different little nuggets. But the script and the words didn't support me being, you know, let me come in. Let me just kick in the door every time I come in. there. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, there's a reason she fell in love with him. Yeah, that's yeah. Really and we talked a lot about that. I yeah, mean, insecurity, I mean, low self-esteem. It's this thing called <laughs> trauma bonding. Right? Yeah. People yeah. bond I mean, over and, trauma. And yeah. that was the thing. It was just between Morocco, Darren and I, like we were just like, yo, it's so it's too easy to play the one note, like mm -hmm. the hero and the bad guy. It's like, you know, how in what ways was the hero or the protagonist also the antagonist? And, you know, in what ways was the villain, you know, the the helper, the lover, you know? And so we just we were like, let let's not make it that two on the nose, you know, for this story, you know, like, let's really show some dimension, you know, let's start from a foundation of like these two people connected and bonded. They really did love each other. And then stuff just fell apart, you know, and it fell apart in the most, you know, traumatic and dramatic ways possible. And so we just, we wanted to show that instead of just being like, good guy, bad guy, good girl, bad girl, you know, like, let's, let's, let's give some layers because life isn't that, it's right. life is not one note like that, you know. Shit, I worked for them for three years. All I heard was one note, ding, yep. ding, <laughs> now, ding. But were you in the bedroom with them early on? He, he actually been. was. Yeah, he, he was. Might have been. Oh yeah, you did. You lived with them at one point. He lived in the basement. Right? They had him in the basement. Cut that scene. <laughs> Cut that scene. We, I heard they deleted Love that. Love like, coming upstairs to, to get something out the fridge and. <laughs> yeah. you know. Let me sit on my lap. <laughs> I was going to ask, there's a part where there's a, a famous picture that we always see. And I want to know why it was cut out. There's a picture of Charlemagne sitting on Wendy Williams' lap, right? Oh, yeah, I saw that You picture. see that picture. Did, did they take that, that scene up? Shut up, up man. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get that far today, We did it. I'm sorry. That's Sierra. Didn't in, didn't your, that far. in your conversation. And I don't know who's sitting on my lap. So, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> in your conversations with oh. Wendy, I'm, I'm sure you also have to think about, just like Morocco had to think about Kevin and, you know, the cheating. Why stay with somebody? She has said that she knew he had all these affairs from the beginning. It wasn't just this one woman. It was so many what was the motivation for her to actually stay with somebody who she always knew was cheating on her? Well, I mean, from her words, a lot of it had to do with, you know, her son and trying to keep her family together. Uh, but me playing a character, you know, again, like I had to justify that stuff too, as far as, you know, in the way in which Morocco was saying. And yeah, I mean, some of it's personal for me. I mean, I look back at some of my relationships, my past ones, and I've definitely stayed in them, you know, a year or two too long and I'm like what the heck was I thinking looking back mm -hmm. but I think you know each relationship you get with somebody and you uh you grow you you grow together you grow apart I mean that's how that goes and somebody has to be the mature one and the big enough one to uh to pull the trigger and I think it just took Wendy a really long time to do that um you know because I think she for me in my interpretation of the relationship I feel like Kevin was really the only person that she felt could protect her mm -hmm. and the only person that she trusted in that sense. I mean, she had to have trust him in some kind of way because he was also her business manager and, you know, really had her back, you know, when all of this stuff was hot on the streets and everything and people are, you know, wanting to fight her and stuff. And so to Kev ain't going to fight nobody. Something. I saw Kev get punked so many times. The day oh, <laughs> Oh, okay. What, okay. Hey, All right. What about when Method Man came to the radio station right after Kevin had just left? Like, just, I mean, Kevin had Kevin was probably still on the street, and when I told him Meth was in the, the the lobby, he was like, "Well, go see what he want." 
<laughs> hey, wouldn't you turn around and come back to the station after you and your well, wife have been on though. the radio kicking this man's back in? He ain't doing none of that. Well, in the movie, he did protect her from Total. Yeah, he protected oh, her from Total. Oh, yeah. That sounds about <laughs> <The> right. <ladies. laughs> now, 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 how many times did you have to practice the how you doing thing? How many times did you practice that? Uh, not really. Uh, not much, because it's not really in the script. I don't even think we... Yeah. Uh, the the version that I we, what we finally landed on with the script I don't think it's in there at all. So, so I how you doing is not in the script. You never say that one time. I thought I seen you say it one oh, time. Oh, I totally just gave that away. But uh, no, I don't think it's in there. At the end, you said, oh, "Never mind." Oh, 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 yeah. Okay, I DJ, think... don't give the whole movie I'm sorry. away. Damn right. Let Lord, people... you one thing that is Charlemagne stuff. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> one thing that is in the movie though, and you said this was hard for you, is to have those big heavy boobs that you had to carry around with you uh, throughout in the... <laughs> so how did they do that? Was that like some type of... What was that? Yo, goodness. I mean, I wish I would have kept those things, actually. That would have been fun. Um, <laughs> but, um, when I Look, when I did the audition, I just got a whole bunch of socks and two bras and went to stuffing because, as y'all can see, I have a very humble situation going on here. Um, you know, but haven't had any complaints. Um, <laughs> but, um, but when we finally got on set, it was, um, we got some prosthetics. I actually ordered them off of Amazon. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> G's prosthetics and, uh, then socks and tape and more bras and, uh, those things, they're, they're very uncomfortable. They're very heavy. I don't know how Wendy does it, but, um, but it, it definitely does something to the psyche, I would say. So, but yeah. Hey, question, Morocco. You said you talked to a couple people about um this the sucker named Kelvin Hunter. Oh, Did anybody say anything good? No. <laughs> That's all I need to know. I need to know it ain't just me. <laughs> Even though I know the answer. Charlamagne, where's your compassion and empathy? No, I, I, I don't, I'm going to be honest with we you. We don't know a, what this brother's gone through. I do, but that, that's a t it's a tough one for me. I'm not going to lie to you. I understand people have unhealed trauma, but he's really, really a terrible human. Like, I've seen him be oh. intentionally terrible to people. And even after not working with them no more, they've done things to me to, like, to really try to like take my head off. So Has he ever done anything nice for you? Yeah, inviting me to be on Wendy's show. He put him in a basement. Back in the he day. gave him a place to live. Yeah, you had a, home, a roof over your head. But you know what? I learned a valuable lesson. Just because somebody does something good for you doesn't mean they're good for you. And if you yeah. want to see how somebody's eventually going to treat you, watch how they treat other people. He's incapable of treating anybody good. But Morocco said nobody had anything good to say about him. Was it like really bad stuff, Morocco? <laughs> you <laughs> you <man. laughs> <Scott>. <laughs> Why you putting me on the spot, man? I know, right? Was it really bad stuff? You want a hug, bro? Do you want a hug? Nobody, no, <laughs> no one went into detail. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, you know, think Suge Knight on the East Coast. That's basically what it was. Man, please, why y'all disrespecting Suge like that? I didn't do it. I'm saying that's what people tell me, you know? It's just like, all right, cool, man. You know what I'm saying? He comes in like a bull. You know, he comes in like a bull and just like, you know, it's just being disrespectful. I'm just like, all right, cool. But, you know, like I said, the script didn't support it. You know what I mean? We had... I was trying to cut the crying scenes. I'm like, why is this brother crying again, man? That's only Oh no, he, no, 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 no. That's true. What's true? He used to cry a lot. He was a crier. That's yo, no, I'm not even joking. That's how I know it's a lot of unhealed trauma. He's a crier. He yeah. will cry. Like boo hoo cry. Boo hoo cry. Oh, yes, he will. Yes, he will definitely do that. Absolutely. A hundred percent. I've seen that. I've seen him drop these. Well, I'm knees sure we have tears. made everybody want to watch this movie on Lifetime this weekend, Saturday night, because <laughs> Just from this conversation here, I know people want to go in and see what this movie is all about. So. And I'm not holding y'all for any uh, falsehoods in the movie. I'm not holding y'all accountable for that because y'all not responsible for that that script. Because if it was really, if they was going to really write this movie, it would have to be with Jordan Peele, Stephen King, Rob Zombie, and whoever did For <laughs> Colored Girls and Precious because it's truly an African-American horror movie. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Or Sierra Payton and Morocco... Uh, I'm sure people will enjoy it. I enjoyed it. Check it out this uh, weekend. Y'all did an amazing job. Y'all did a great job. Your role Absolutely. Too. I, Thank you. Even just how you guys look and how the and just your voices and everything. Mm -hmm. I just want to commend y'all for doing such an amazing job and playing the roles that you had. Thank you. All right. I just hope everybody enjoys it. Now, 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 Morocco. Let me just ask you one last question, right? If you could put yourself in Kev one last time, what would you say to Charlamagne one time? Pause. 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 <laughs> Jesus Christ. Right. Pause, bro. <laughs> God damn. He meant to say, Envy meant to say, if you could get back in character oh as Kevin, 
<laughs> One last time, we would love for you to address Charlemagne as Kevin. I have no dog in that fight, man. I don't, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, but I, I'm a, I got. I, I will say I got. I got love for Wendy though. I do have love for Wendy. I actually do genuinely feel sorry for Wendy because Wendy is not. I don't think the core of Wendy is a bad person at all. I don't. Yeah. But I think when you've been and around, I, feel that. I think yeah, when you've been I around somebody that. so toxic for so long, which is Kelvin Hunter, you know, sometimes <laughs> that crazy. can read that that you you take on some of those those traits. You become what you may hate. But I don't think when I don't think the core of her is a bad person. All right. Well, okay. Sierra Payton, Morocco, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you guys, and good luck with everything. Thank you. Peace. All, all right. Blessings. Now. All right. Blessings. Bye. <laughs>